Have you ever wondered what a professional marathon runner eats whilst training for said marathon and living at altitude? Well, if you have, you're gonna find out today because I'm gonna take you through an entire day of eating whilst I'm living up here in St. Moritz at 6,000 feet of altitude. And it might just surprise you how much hungrier I got. Let's get into it. So to kickstart my day in the most shocking turn of events, I had the most unique breakfast that probably no other runner has ever had before, especially not distance runners. I had, wait for it, porridge, otherwise known as oatmeal. Yeah, I was being sarcastic about no runners ever eating porridge. Everyone knows that, well, a lot of runners are probably 50% oats at this point. So porridge it was with a healthy drizzle of honey to make it sweet, but also to top up the carbohydrates and wash down as always, with a good cup of English tea. I brought the Yorkshire tea bags out here with me and I have a box of 40 to last me an entire month out here, which means I can have a cup of tea in the daytime, that is not my morning fix, about nine times, which means I gotta ration the daytime cups of tea. I'm gonna have to pick and choose when I treat myself to a good old English brew. Now, in terms of the running today, it was actually a shorter day, just six miles on the menu this morning, but that's rounding off a 90 mile week. Well, actually 89.01 miles, which a lot of you really scolded me for over on Instagram, but never mind. Crucially, that doesn't mean I'm going to intentionally eat less food because I'm running less, because I ran 24 miles yesterday. And with that being just 24 hours ago, the body is still very much recovering and food is a massive component for that. And I'll talk a little bit more about how my nutrition will be slightly different whilst I'm at altitude later on in the video. So porridge and tea down the hatch, it was time for an easy run. Two and a half miles into the easy six mile run this morning. It's bloody windy. And just stopped to empty the bladder. I swear, it does not matter how many times I pee before I leave the house, how empty I think I've got my bladder. Without fail, I stop in the first 20 minutes to pee. It's like I just have to do a wild one on probably 75% of the runs I do. So hopefully I'm not alone in that. Let me know in the comment section below if you don't mind sharing, if you are faced with the same issue. I mean, I don't mind quite a beautiful place to go for a wild wee and uh, yeah we should take it easy this morning appreciating the beautiful scenery as always and with today being Sunday the 23rd of April at the time of filming I was feeling pretty smug to get back from my run just in time for the most important running broadcast of the entire year Woman we're going to see in the second Ayana in Amsterdam. Just in time to watch the London Marathon. The women are literally on the start line. I've timed this to perfection. So glad I had my long run session yesterday and not today. So I can now sit here and watch people run a marathon all day. Buzzing. So we ran 6.15 miles this morning. Six miles was on the plan. I ran an extra 0.15 miles for absolutely no reason definitely was not to get me to a round number for the week so that I finished on exactly 89 miles. Nope, at least I didn't go 7.15 to get to 90. I stuck to the plan, I only ran 200 extra meters than I was set, so still being sensible. And with one eye on the elite women who just started the London Marathon and the other eye on my own post-run recovery, I had myself a protein shake. A mixture today of the chocolate and vanilla OTE protein, delivering a hit of 30 grams of protein in total, mixed together with water, importantly. Now, it's always best to mix protein powders with water rather than milk when you're drinking protein to help recover your muscles, because although milk can offer some additional protein, the protein within the powder is easy to digest and gets to the muscle faster when mixed with water because it's absorbed into the blood much faster, hitting the muscles quicker, getting the recovery process started quicker. And after shaking the living daylights out of it, the shake was ready to drink with a small upper body workout to boot. You never want a lumpy protein shake. And after finishing off the dregs of the shake and watching the elite men and the masses get started at the London Marathon, 
It was time for lunch. Kicked off with another cup of Yorkshire tea and, well, another basic runner's staple, eggs and avo on toast. Not before snacking on a pre-brunch starter of toast and jam because I was just too hungry to wait for my eggs at this point. Now, the average avocado contains around 30 grams of fat. And a lot of runners will try to avoid high fat foods, focusing on protein, carbs, and fiber. But trust me when I say that you genuinely need to have fats in your diet as well. So my big sell for the humble avocado is that they're rich in monounsaturated fat, AKA the good stuff, which helps you to absorb the vitamins and nutrients from your diet, making those fruits and vegetables go further. And they're an incredibly nutrient and vitamin dense food themselves. So I paired the humble avo with two fried eggs. Again, a great protein hit. Also delicious with smashed avo, it's a match made in heaven atop some very tasty Swiss bread. This one is kind of like a non-sweet, slightly less soft brioche and is fast becoming my staple out here. A delicious marathon watching meal. <sighs> what a race. Now I appreciate that by the time this video comes out, <laughs> London Marathon will be old news, but at the time of filming, London Marathon was today, so I sat at the dining table like the most disgusting human being for two plus hours after my run, having not showered because the London Marathon literally started when I got back. And I have zero regrets because what a sensational race, especially on the women's side, to have three women still in contention for the win with 200, 150 meters to go. And that win from Sif and Hassan, my God. I'm in two minds about it being incredibly motivating to watch those kind of performances, just see the crowds at London and makes me want to do it more than ever, especially London, which is the marathon in general. And then I see the elites <laughs> after the finish line sprawled across the floor in a world of pain. And that kind of makes me feel a little bit sick. So a bit of both going on. Anyway, I've had a shower now and you'll be pleased to know I am clean and check in with you next when I have my afternoon snackage. So I did crack on with some work, planning some content for the next few weeks, a bit of life admin and some coaching plans updated before it was snack attack time. I had a delicious smoothie left over from yesterday, a mix of frozen raspberries, yogurt, milk, banana, and some fresh ginger, yum. Health is wealth, and it's also very tasty. I was very sad when I heard the straw sucking air noise that meant that my smoothie was all gone. <coughs> a little Swiss chalky biscuit to get me through until my next snack, which was a tasty banana yog bowl, this time with a mixture of natural yogurt and vanilla skier, doubling up the protein and stocking up on the carbs. We've got 15 miles to run tomorrow, so it's important to top up those carb stores that I've used up over the last couple of days, I've run 30 miles this weekend, so that I've got those carbs stored up and I'm ready to use them again tomorrow. And this is probably a good time to note that I'm probably snacking slightly more than I would do at home at sea level at this point. And that's because being altitude genuinely makes you hungrier. Think about it, there's less oxygen here, so your body is having to work harder to just go through its normal daily functions as well as running, which is gonna use more calories. It's also really important to stay hydrated at altitude because whilst it's dry, you do sweat a lot at altitude. And the last thing you want is to be just 1% dehydrated in an environment where your body is already working harder to recover in less than optimal conditions. So I'm piling in the snacks, I'm drinking plenty of water to make sure that I'm in the best possible place to respond to the training, get the benefits from being altitude, and to make sure that my body is well fueled and I'm not gonna lose any weight whilst I'm up here. And then before we know it, it's dinner time. And something that I've been using at home when I'm not on camp and fortunate enough to have teammates who are cooking for me on a rotor, I do my fair share as well, has been HelloFresh. Now Daniel and I have been using HelloFresh for the past few weeks and it has been game changing for my routine, especially when I'm in the depths of marathon training and I just don't even have time to think about what I want to eat let alone actually cook the stuff. And HelloFresh have got you covered as well this spring with over a hundred recipes that change every month to make sure that you're getting all of those delicious nutrients in, tasty meals, well proportioned, and taking all of the thinking out of it so you can just cook and enjoy. 
All of the HelloFresh meals take between 20 and 50 minutes to cook, so you're not going to be slaving away for hours. And something that I've really enjoyed when selecting the meals is scrolling through the different categories and choosing ones which matter to me, like the high protein meals and the rapid cooks. Tonight, we're having this delicious roast chicken breast with some roasted veggies, and this needs to go in the oven. a beauty now before I tuck into this delicious dinner I've got a discount code for you guys it's on the screen now as well as the QR code using that will get you 60% off your first box and 25% off your next two use the link in the description below huge thanks to HelloFresh for my dinner and for sponsoring today's video so what's on the menu for dinner you ask two squares of frozen spinach yeah I'm I'm obviously joking. I actually had some leftover tuna pasta from the night before, but this was a pretty plain dinner, one that I'd had pre 24 mile long run. So I was keen to keep it simple that night with a bland, high carb, low fiber meal so that I could rule out any unwanted stomach troubles. But tonight I wanted to jazz it up a little bit and chuck some greens in the mix. So added in some fiber and some more nutrients with some spinach, probably my favorite vegetable. Call me Popeye, but spinach, in my opinion, is the goat of the green vegetable. Easy to cook, high in vitamin C, A and K, a good kick of fiber, folate, iron and nitrates. All of that in just a little spinach leaf. And nitrates are also really beneficial for endurance sports, which is why you see people sipping on those concentrated beetroot shots sometimes before races. So spinach cooked, I mixed it in with the leftover tuna pasta and topped it onto some rather sad looking salad that's probably past its prime, but it was still edible, a very tasty bowl of fuel indeed. And then we rounded off the day with some chalky milk and a banana before bed. A tip from my sports dietitian for when I'm at higher volume training, having a glass of chocolate milk and a banana an hour or so before bed, just to top up the calories and to make sure that I'm getting enough fuel into my body to get through this tough training. And it actually can be hard to eat just enough calories when you're running nearly a hundred miles a week. So a hot chocolate or a chalky milk and banana before bed whilst I'm in marathon training is fast becoming a staple. And so far, so good. The body is feeling good in response to the training, which is a really good sign, not only that my training is well measured and well planned, I've got those injury prevention exercises in, but also that I'm fueling my body well, because the minute you're not fueling your body enough, you're gonna see niggles and injuries arise. No calories counted here, just tasty meals and tasty snacks that I like and that work for me. And I'm always looking to try new snacks and meals actually. So if you've got any suggestions that you think I should try, stick them in the comment section below and maybe they'll be in my next what I eat in a day video. Love the grind.